We can't even acknowledge the calamity that has befallen mankind without being politically incorrect, an old communist party term, now in mainstream news. It makes us nostalgic for that brief shining moment a century ago, when the mainstream media could still mention the most pressing issue of all time. In July 1920, the state Tory newspaper, The Morning Post, published a series of 18 articles, saying there has long existed, like a canker at the heart of our civilization, a secret revolutionary sect, mainly of Judaic origin, bent on the destruction of all Christian empires, altars, and thrones. They were later published in booklet form under the title, The Cause of World Unrest, 1920, introduced by H. A. Gwynn. Nesta Webster was one of the contributors. This conspiracy now has materialized in the form of the CV-19 scandemic. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. Thank you. After the Bolshevik Revolution, Christian nations briefly stirred in their sleep and recognized that the Jewish conspiracy was not the figment of a bigot's imagination, but rather the key to understanding history, current events, and the human condition in general. History is the product of a long-term occult plan by Kabbalist central bankers to subjugate the human race using war, genocide, revolution, social engineering and financial collapse as their main instruments. In 1920, no less a figure than Winston Churchill felt emboldened to write. From the days of Spartacus Weishaupt to those of Karl Marx, and down to Trotsky, Russia, Bela Kun, Hungary, Rosa Luxemburg, Germany, and Emma Goldman, United States, this worldwide revolutionary conspiracy for the overthrow of civilization, and for the reconstitution of society on the basis of arrested development, of envious malevolence, and impossible equality, has been steadily growing. Both Zionism and Communism are right and left pincers of the same Luciferian conspiracy. Churchill, a paid minion of the Zionist branch, pretended to eschew communism, but collaborated with Stalin. In his book, The Decline of the West, 1918, Oswald Spengler noted that almost an entire generation of the ruling classes of Germany and England had perished in World War I. Thus the Anglo-Saxon race had entered a period of irreversible decline, in which it would inevitably give way to another more vigorous race, probably from the East. In the rise of communism and the mass migration of Jews to the United States, many identified this conquest with the Jews. In July 1920, the state Tory newspaper, The Morning Post, published a series of 18 articles, with an introduction by its editor H. A. Gwynn. It said there has long existed, like a canker at the heart of our civilization, a secret revolutionary sect, mainly of Judaic origin, bent on the destruction of all Christian empires, altars, and thrones. In the first article, an expert on the occult, Koppen Albanselli, stated that the occult power which works behind revolutionary Freemasonry is the secret government of the Jewish nation. The article quoted a Jewish convert to Christianity, Ab Joseph Lehman, as saying that Hebraic antagonism to Christianity had led the Jews to utilize secret societies. From the time of Moses, a secret cabal was the custodian of the most sublime truths of the Hebraic religion and, unlike the average Jew, was hellbent on world domination. The Morning Post then affirmed that the Protocols of the Elders of Zion is not a hoax. Its goal was to establish the government of the world by a king of the blood of David. The Protocols linked Jews with Freemasonry. There was an inner or Jewish masonry, the true governing power, and an outer or Gentile masonry, which blindly follows the direction of the former. According to the Post, the Protocols took credit for the French Revolution. On the ruins of the natural aristocracy of the Goyen, we have set up the aristocracy of our educated classes, headed by the aristocracy of money. The Morning Post tied the protocols to the Russian Revolution. It acknowledged Kabbalist Jewish backing of socialists, communists, and anarchists, under the ruse of the bankers, alleged ardent desire to serve the working classes. After an engineered financial crash, the Goyim will be compelled to offer us international power that will enable us to gradually absorb all the great forces of the world and to form a super government. Sound like the NWO? The Gentile cattle will work for their Kabbalist Jewish masters. A system of education will erase any recollection of their former state from the minds of the Goyim and establish the Jewish religion as the universal faith. The alarm sounded by the Morning Post echoed one by the Times of London. In May 1920, Lord Northcliffe, a part owner of the Times, printed an article about the Protocols of Zion, entitled The Jewish Peril, a disturbing pamphlet, a call for an inquiry. It concluded, an impartial investigation of these would-be documents, and their history is most desirable, are we to dismiss the whole matter without inquiry, and to let the influence of such a book as this work unchecked. But the alarm largely fell on deaf ears. 
As Hilaire Belloc explained in 1922, the British Empire was largely the product of an alliance between Jewish finance and the British aristocracy, under the rubric of Kabbalism, that is, Freemasonry. The Kabbalist Jew world order is nothing but an extension of British imperialism. As Douglas Reed described in a book entitled, Controversy of Zion, Lord Northcliffe was declared insane and poisoned I in 1922. Howell Gwynn, the editor of the Morning Post, survived until 1937, when the paper was bought by Rothschild allies and merged into the Telegraph. With the upcoming ruse called World War II, the Rothschilds were taking no chances. At present, the world represents the near consummation of plans, laid centuries ago, and voiced in the protocols of the elders of Zion. Democracy is a charade. We are controlled by a satanic cult. The Kabbalist bankers own the politicians left and right. The majority is besieged by migrants and immigrants who do not reflect it. Education dumbs us down. The mass and social media release toxic venom into the cultural bloodstream. Children are sexualized and told to question their gender. We are taught to embrace homosexuality. Cattle need to be gelded and domesticated. We can't even acknowledge our calamity without being politically incorrect. It makes us nostalgic for that brief shining moment 100 years ago, when the mainstream media could still mention the most pressing issue of all time. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.